Hello everybody, I'm Boaz Feiler, I'm an evolutionary astrologer and this is the evolutionary astrology forecast or message for the week between the, the 2nd and the 9th of June 2018. So we're heading into a week that I would say is not a good time to make important decisions. This is a week that I would advise you to wait and feel things more than actually decide and move forward. We have two aspects in the sky that could cause erroneous uh, decisions either influenced too much by uh, emotions or by information which is not realistic or relevant, something of an illusion. So I would rather that if you have important decisions to make through this week, postpone them a little if it's possible. And if you should do things and move forward, do so uh, with the guidance of others in your life, guidance of others that you can consult, that know what they're talking about on that particular subject have nothing to gain or lose by your decision and that you trust okay so Saturday the second of the month Saturn is in a yod formation with the North Node and Mercury that's two Queen Kongses with a sextile in the middle it's called the finger of God and it's a very purifying aspect and there's more Queen Kongses coming through this week and, and the weeks ahead and it's a pure it's a time of purification it's not so much a time of adding but a time of lessening it's a time to look at our lives and and think what isn't efficient for us anymore what of our moves of our navigation of our ideas of our uh, of our information and and concepts and communication ways is not relevant anymore it's just not efficient anymore it used to be a, 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 a thriving well of live water but that well has dried up and we still go and walk towards that well hypnotized almost uh, with our brains on automatic uh, like we did before seeking solace or seeking uh, warmth and tenderness but that water is not there anymore to quench our thirst so we have to look at our lives and actually cleanse out patterns that are not beneficial for us in our future and remain with less, but less that is worth more to us. Moon is conjunct Pluto on the second, so please watch away for drama and be just a little bit more logical and less intense on that day. Venus is in an exact trine with Neptune. Of course, this is part of the grand water trine we talked about in the last video. And I praise that time for being emotional and creative and, and emotional, creative and spiritual and just more relaxed and feminine. But uh, uh, some colleagues told me, you know, this could be a time of emotional swelling and, and maybe uh, overwhelming as well. So, yes, this is a grand water trine. And if there's more emotion in the air and more femininity in the air, of course, that's one of the possible consequences. I'm enjoying this time tremendously. I like it. Uh, try to be in nature and in, sh in a shanti mode as much as you can. And you'll enjoy it too. <laughs> but even through the hectic parts of our day, remember. Remember the, the, the sound of water and wind through the trees and, uh, and you gazing on the mountains whenever that was. Or looking at the seaside it's a good time to take power from nature or I wouldn't say take but receive um, Aquarius moon is querying Uranus and at night and I just want to state again that the old times all the times I'm giving if you're in the States move them nine hours back if you're in Australia move them nine hours ahead okay at night time on Saturday the 2nd, the moon is going to square Uranus. We have to be careful not to stand out too far, not to be too rebellious and not to be um, too sure of ourselves and, and, and um, too decisive. 
Sunday the 3rd, we having the Aquarius Moon conjunct Mars on the south, south node in the morning, kind of hectic, not a very Sunday energy. It's, it's too fast, it's too loud, it's too intense, and it could be um, with a very short fuse as well. We have to watch our nerves, we have to watch our pace, we have to f watch our speed, and take it a little calmer, make it a little slower. And, and watch ourselves on the roads as well, or if we're exercising on Sunday morning. At the nighttime, however, the moon is draining Mercury. Uh, Sunday morning is great for, for physical activities and to utilize that energy in a constructive way. The nighttime, the moon is draining Mercury, so it's a great night to have intellectual conversations or to utilize your left brain for anything needed, like writing or analyzing, or just, you know, expanding your intelligence. Monday the 4th, the sun is trining in the moon, happy times, um, just a, a feel-good transit when the sun trines the moon, you know, it's like, it's a feeling that everything is in place. And the Aquarius moon is going to square Jupiter in the morning, so just watch out from indulgence, watch out from extravagance, watch out not to want to jump too high too soon and to ask for too much, uh, a little moderation and, and modesty would go a long way on Monday morning. Tuesday the 5th, Pisces Moon, Sextile, Uranus. Allow yourself to dare on Tuesday. Allow yourself to innovate. Allow yourself to go out of your routine and try new things. Wednesday the 6th, a lot of things happening in the sky. We have Mercury in a superior conjunction with the Sun. That's a Kazemi. That's a great day for visualizations regarding philosophical, regarding spiritual things in your life. Superior conjunction is said to bring uh, thoughts and ideas more of a spiritual and metaphysical nature of a higher nature while a lower conjunction is said to be more earthly in nature so just take a little time to visualize how you would like your life to to be on those planes on the more on the higher more philosophical and spiritual planes the moon is sextiling saturn so it's a great day to take things forward together with other people Regarding your work or career, not alone. Because Venus is opposing Pluto on that day, exactly. And this is a, a, a transit that we'll be feeling all through the week and half through uh, uh, next week. And Mercury squaring Neptune as well. So Mercury squaring Neptune is one of these transits that I've been talking about that could cause emotional or erroneous decisions um, or just a feeling of losing one's way. It is important to lose one's way if we want to find our way back, if we want to calibrate ourselves. Don't worry, it's a passing, it's a passing phase. But um, the Venus opposing Pluto, very interesting. I have it in my natal chart, so I know it well. My father has it in his natal chart as well. Venus opposing Neptune on the positive side can bring very deep transformational relationships can bring us to a point of understanding our intricate inner mechanism regarding relationship, satisfaction, love, income, and the parts we play in front of ourselves and other people because Venus is in touch uh, with subjects like our inner value and self-esteem as well by her ruling Taurus. So this is a time that on the one hand we could have deep relationships, transformative relationships with others or through our work and understand ourselves and others better or our relationships better or the way we satisfy ourselves better and actually transcend our limits and rise up from the phoenix in you. On the not so positive side, this is a time that there could be great turbulence within relationships or within my work environment. This is a time that I could dig in too deep and be too intense and too emotional and too dramatic and blow things up. And, and be enraged regarding uh, uh, these subjects in my life or become overly sexualized or become um, you know Pluto has to deal with all the emotions that run underneath our uh, surface and if these emotions are unchecked they could that lava can destroy a lot of the Venusian garden on top of our grounds so we have to take it under control, we have to take it under moderation, which, is, which isn't very easy with this opposition. But if we do, we are um, 
able to gain a lot through the sun position. The moon is going to try in Jupiter in the evening on Wednesday, so again, it's a great night to host. It's a great evening to go out. It's a great time to read or, or expand your horizons. It's a time that you could really enjoy. And of course, just for the example of it, it's morning to noontime in the States, and it's, uh, and it's the morning of Thursday in Australia and the Pacific. So Thursday, the 7th, the sun is squaring Neptune. That's another aspect that we'll be feeling all through the week that is the reason that I asked you not to make important decisions. This is a time that we could feel that things are unclear, that we might be unsure of our way forward. Again, this is an important time to recalibrate. This is an important time to stop, smell the flowers a minute, and just look at nature and think. Think and let things come. You know, Albert Einstein, as well as many other inventors and geniuses, always said that his epiphanies came not while being in the lab or at his office, but while he was going on his walks to clear his mind. And that's not unusual. Um, so, Thursday the 7th, Sun, square, Chi uh, square Neptune, Moon conjunct Chiron on that day, a day with a lot of potential for healing and for hurting. So, be aware of that. Uh, there's a sextile to Pluto, which can bring inner strength and inner power, and a trine to Venus in the morning, which could bring a lot of satisfaction and joy on Thursday morning to our lives. Fri and of course, uh, Australia, that's Friday night, and America, that's Wednesday evening. Um, Friday the 8th, Moon, sextile Mars, very energetic morning, uh, a time to do our errands and uh, exercises and then at noon time it's square Saturn that's a time not to be too harsh too hard or too judgmental Saturday the 9th the moon is sextiling the Sun again a joyful time to be with others uh, moon square Pluto at noon time just don't be too dramatic or too intense sextile Mercury in the evening again a great time to uh, fertilize your minds and be with other people and then square Venus at night time, which means don't take it too far and don't ask for too much and be careful from conflicts with others in your relationships. Um, so I think that's about it. That's what I wanted to tell you. Again, for private consultations and for readings or uh, uh, courses, private lessons, you're welcome to uh, contact me. And I want to thank you for sharing this i want to thank you for commenting on this and i want to thank you for liking this it exposes these videos to more people hope you're going to have an amazing weekend and a wonderful positive week ahead this is boaz filer signing out namaste thank you and goodbye